Command S. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker, and this is WP Water Cooler. Today's topic is organizing your content with custom post types and taxonomies. Let's go around the room real quick and get everyone introduced. Chris, tell us about yourself. Uh, my name is Chris Robinson. I primarily sell WordPress themes over on ThemeForest. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Contempo Inc. And yeah, it's kind of in a nutshell. Awesome. Good to have you on. How about you, John? I'm John Brown. I run a company called Nine Seeds. Uh, we do custom WordPress development for various clients. Uh, a couple products, uh, and I am a digital nomad who travels all over to WordCamps and other places. Awesome. Good to have you. How about you, Russ? Uh, hey, what's up? My name is Russ. I work at uh, Web Dev Studios, and uh, custom post types are the bane of my existence. <laughs> 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 I, I, ironically, my, my personal WordPress site has a million custom post types, so we'll dig into that. Well, hopefully, we'll make it better again for you. This is going to become a therapy session really fast. <laughs> How about you, William? I think oh, it's sorry, yeah, I, I lost you. I lost you guys there for a second. Uh, I'm William Bay. Uh, I used to run Flaunt Your Site. Now I'm, you know, I'm I'm looking for a job. Um, so, but uh, whatever the opposite of Bane is, is for me what custom post types are. I love custom post types. So. Awesome. Steve, what about you? I am Steve Zengit. I am the founder of Zeke Interactive, and I run the OC WordPress Meetup. And you are dragging it today, aren't you, my Oh, man, dude. It was a, <laughs> it was a weekend. <laughs> uh, Christmas parties. Hey, this is, uh, this is my name is Jason Tucker. You can find me over jasontucker.blog, and I do a whole bunch of Twitter stuff over at Jason Tucker. So let's talk about custom post types and taxonomies. Steve, what, what do you what do you know about custom post types and taxonomies that you can uh, describe a little bit of this to us for? So WordPress uh, comes with uh, uh, there's the standard post types, posts, pages, media, um, comments, right? Those are those are standard post types that are built in. But you have the flexibility as a developer to extend those into anything you want, right? Uh, you can either do it as a developer or there's plugins for it. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, Russ's uh, company publishes one of the most popular plugins for managing custom post types, which is called Custom Post Type UI, which I use pretty extensively. Um, but a custom post type, and I'm sure we'll talk about several of them, is something beyond uh, posts and pages that you kind of want to segment in, in, your, uh, in your WordPress space to make, the, make it so that the editors uh, can... You know, more easily access the content of the dashboard, and your users can you know, access it on the front end. It just kind of puts puts something into a bucket. That's what I was going to say. So uh, additionally, what you would do is you'd put all your posts in the post, and then if you had news stories, you could create your own uh, additional post type called news, and then you'd put all your stories in the news, and basically you're you're segregating this kind of post from this kind of post, and you're just separating them. Um, in the back end, and then on the front end, you can uh, do lots of cool queries with stuff like that. And so your post type, and I, and I don't want to get too far down the road here, but your post type will actually have a, uh, a slug, right? So if it was news, right, the post type is now called news. And on the front end, in the permalink, it will be called your, your website slash news slash the title of the post, which gives you a little SEO bump. Yeah, yeah, and you know, by by using custom post types instead of trying to use something like uh, taxonomies or or uh, or categories, you have a little bit more flexibility because then some a lot, a lot of the times you, when you're dealing with uh, using like a like a widget or a, a short code or something like that, it's much easier to query just the custom post type itself than having to deal with all sorts of you know uh, include this, exclude that type of stuff that's going on there. And you tend to have um, too many of them that will show up, or you'll have something that sneaks in because you accidentally put it in the wrong category. Now, one thing, to, one thing to note for our, for you know, for our audience is you may just have some custom post types in your in your site already, right? But because if you've installed a plugin that uh, it, that creates a custom post type or taxonomy, it just may be happening for you. So, what um, are some of the common ones? So uh, com common ones would be like galleries or slideshows. Those are very common ones. Portfolio. Events. Portfolio. Portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. If you're using the uh, of, of, uh, events, like Events Calendar Pro or something along those yeah. lines. Uh, I, 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 manager, like I, CRM. 
I would also argue that Teams, Teams is a big one. So, like most websites have uh, a company profile page that oh, lists, like you know, team staff. Yeah, team staff, staff. Yeah, something mm-hmm. like that. I, I think are a little. I'm on the fence with like people using Teams for like custom post types. I've seen the same thing happen with uh, real estate sites, and they do agents. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, as far as querying, like, why don't you just use the built-in WordPress users? <laughs> and then, as far as like just everything in my opinion it's better to use core functions rather than be like reinventing the wheel sure. it, it is it is and i think we're we're, we're stepping into a good yeah. part of this no it's a good part, a good, of this, good part of this conversation is it's very easy to to get into the unwieldy yep. uh you know um in 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 uh space in with your custom post times you, they can get out of control fast right so you don't want everything to be a custom post type and you really want to have a good use case for it before you create a custom post type right let me give you an example if you're just creating custom post type for video that's probably not a good use case for custom post type because that's a post format it's already built into wordpress and if you're using word post formats correctly you can just call it video or very simply before post formats come came around, you could just get, have a category called video and segment your post that way. Well, well yeah, so, one so. way I used to think about it is like custom post type should be something that's a a separate content stream. Yeah, right. So uh, you know, we used to actually use them. Sometimes we would have like a blog, and then we'd have press releases, but we didn't want the press releases to show up in the blog. And that's not the best example, but they're still just separate content streams, right? Well, then once you get into things like events and staff pages and whatever. Um, some of that really makes sense to never show up in your in your standard post stream of content. Um, what Chris was saying is that there's a lot of times you can use some other functionality, users, or if you only have a couple of staff members, there's no reason to do a post type for them, just right. pages. Like it, well, you use hierarchical pages for that kind of thing. So with with post types, I remember when they came in, and I think the the prob or the the problem that custom post types are trying to solve were to remove the word category from the URL. So you no longer had your site slash category slash news. And I think it was just slash news and it was an easier way to get that permalink. But now that WordPress has come out with ways to uh, drop off that category in the URL or, you know, I I don't think that we need to be doing custom post types as heavy as we had to, like say in 3.8, 3.9. Well, no, no, actually, I, I, I disagree because, you know, the, the reason they came out with the, the CPT is to turn it more into a real CMS as opposed to just a blogging system. A lot of acronyms in that sentence, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, sorry, content management system, like, like a true content manager system like Joomla or, you know, whatever else is out there, right? Oh, so <laughs> let's talk about the one thing about, so when custom post types came out, there was still some talk about people overusing them when you could have used a taxonomy or a category and and in some cases a page or hierarchical pages and those those things are still true but um custom post types can be awesome but they also do fall down in a couple of instances where you still are, would be way better off and <clears throat> I mean, really develop around people right now but there's other places where you really do want to go old school and create a custom table and what that really comes down to is if you need to index your content on something other than a post id the classic example is events, and we've now seen, you know, a dozen events plugins um, using custom post types, and they're all awful at scale because you, you can't query any uh, dates. And and a, and a sim- <clears throat> similar similar to that to what John's saying is another example of that would be a directory, right? So if you're building a custom Yelp, for lack of a better term, mm-hmm. right, that can get unwieldy really fast. We have a couple of those, and 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 they're hard to manage inside of what John's referring to is inside of post meta, which is not indexed. But I, I think that that problem itself where you're putting everything into post meta or whatever, I think that problem has created better tools like um, uh, Elasticsearch and mm-hmm. you know stuff like that. So even mm. though it did create a problem, it actually created a better solution down the road. So there are some benefits to people going in and doing crazy things with it because better tools come out of it. What, what, what I like, um, where I like to um, uh, do use custom post types is if I've got a particular content type that needs specialized admin areas, right, meta boxes mm-hmm, inside yeah. of the dashboard, that's when I start to, if I've got content that says, okay, I need these specific uh, meta 
uh, abilities, right? I, I need my editors to be able to edit this kind of stuff. That's a good candidate for custom post type because then it's nice and bundled. And like I said, it's a bucket of of stuff. Here, you I've click got on some this thing. Yeah, dovetailing off that, Steve, I've got you know real world examples I can provide for people, and they can kind of go from from that. So with um, a lot, a lot of my background is, you know, I work with photographers. So um, what I've done in an effort to kind of streamline their, their, you know, how they set up their websites and make them SEO friendly and user friendly, I will create, uh, you know, because a lot of these photographers will do weddings, portraits, you know, uh, babies, maternity, that sort of thing. So I'll create a, a post, post type called services. And in that service post type, I will actually create the structure with uh, advanced custom fields. So i will use custom fields to create what the content it is that they're going to create, you know, put in. So it'll have things like rates, areas served, um, things like that, that that will, that Google wants to see as well as users, right? So when you go to a page and you're like, oh, this person shoots maternity, let's click on that. And then everything's right there, right? So, but that's a custom post type that I created all they have to do is go in, create, add new service, and boom, the, all that's right there for them. Yeah, and being able to kind of cross-link those between various um, posts by using uh, taxonomies sure. to make that all happen is... Yeah, well, another well. thing I do with that is um, is with, with a little bit more advanced uh, sites, I'll do clients. So I'll have a custom post type called clients. Mm -hmm. And what I'll do is I'll set it up so that there's a taxonomy for a client as well. And now I'll custom reference the, the blog post that they do. So for like, say, for example, wedding photographer will usually have two blog posts. One will be the engagement session that they photograph. And then the other will be the wedding. And they like to, you know, post their, their weddings and their photos from, from that in just a big, long, you know, big, long post. And so it, what happens is I'll have them tag the client name in the post and in the client itself, the client post type. And then on the front end, I'll do it so that it queries the blog post. So you can see, you know, like on that client homepage, you'll be like, well, here's the latest two blog posts that they have, right? So you can actually click in. Yeah. So let's 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 backtrack a minute for our audience, right? We talked. We sure. kind of define what a custom post type is. Let's define what a custom taxonomy is, right? So built into WordPress, we've got if you look at posts, we've got categories and tags, but you can extend those as well to have different organization to your content, right? A, the example Chris gave with uh, with real estate, you could have a taxonomy for city or state or region, mm -hmm. right? So that you can group everything by that taxonomy. Yeah, yeah. 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 the nice thing about taxonomy is, is, oh, sorry, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, it's all you. Uh, so yeah, I was gonna say about the, the taxonomies is now you're not just stuck with category tag, you can define something else. Like Steve was saying, the city or the location, the, you know, like you can get really, you know, finite with those um, taxonomies. Cool. <laughs> um, so, so, so one of the things that I've been doing for one of our clients is um, they, so they actually have a thing called uh, timeline. And so we have a custom post type that's called timeline and then they create a new post called um, like our history. And then inside of our history, um, they can add, you know, like, here's what we did in 1936. Here's what we did in 1941. And so um, they're instead of creating, 200 posts in that post type they're creating one post in that post type and then adding repeater stuff using advanced custom fields so mm -hmm. you don't have like when i think of uh, custom post types i think of kind of like the blog layout where you have you know 200 blogs or whatever but when you start doing things customly or a, with advanced custom fields you can really get into manipulating that data to make it do specifically what you want and I think when I look at custom post types, that's one of the first things I look at is, is this a specific case where we need to do something interesting and we don't want to touch the rest of the site? If so, then we should look into a custom post type. And, and, and I think you sort of touched on this, Russ. You know, I think the important part of this is, is the planning piece, right? So, so uh -huh. it, before you just jump in and create a custom post type and a taxonomy and install custom post type UI and advanced custom fields, write down on paper what this is going to be, right? What's, what's it, what's it going to be in the dashboard? What's it going to be on the front end? How's it going to be used, right, by your end users, right? And also determine how much content are we talking about, right? 
for instance, I don't think testimonials is a is on most of my sites is a good use case for custom Ooh. post type because really? sometimes there's well, that's another popular one though. That's another I know popular. it is. I know it is. Okay, let me let me backtrack on 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 a lot of the sites that I built. There's five testimonials, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, right. why build all Fair the infrastructure enough. if you just need to make like a post that just has some stuff in there or a page and just has some stuff in there and you're that's done. That's right. If you've got yeah, if you've got a hundred testimonials or if you've got a whole testimonials you know area with yeah. comments on it, by all means that's a good custom post type. But but it, if you're just adding a, a small little testimonial section to the home page, like you could get away with that in Visual Composer. You don't need a whole custom post type. Visual Composer. <laughs> All right, I'm, 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 dude. I'm you, look, you guys I, said I, Drupal I, earlier, and I, then you said Visual Composer. I, I don't know why you guys are using all these bad words on the show. <laughs> no, no, but 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 it's one of those things. Like when you look at a lot of theme demonstrations on on Theme Force, you see like a testimonial thing, and you don't really need a slide. You don't really need like a whole section for it. You right. can just add your own little thing and add the cute little box and the picture of the girl speaking into a bubble, and 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 call it a day. Like you don't need a custom post. -up. You said theme forest. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we can't so, win. Well, well, so we have we have somebody on the show who's the, who I'm, builds themes, I, and, and so well, I'm so I'm, I'm just, just but, but Chris, I, I'm just I'm, wondering I'm, how Chris handles that. But and, but and, and, and so Chris, you can unmute yourself. <laughs> you can unmute yourself. Right? No, this is good. I don't think talking about it. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think Chris is the kind of developer that that, that publishes a theme, a theme with five sliders in it. Uh, no, <laughs> it's six, uh, right? Six sliders. And I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say sliders. Uh, I mean, and literally any of the themes that I actually publish, I don't. None of them are dependent on third-party plugins. So I try. I mean, even though the buyers want that, I do include them, like Visual Composer Revolution or Slider Revolution. But um, yeah, can mute him, mute him if he says Visual Composer again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I say VC? <laughs> Is, bomb, it, bomb, it, bomb, 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 bomb. Is there a boot button in the uh, in Google Hangouts? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I, I think there just needs to be a little black box that says "censored over the mouth" when you say it. <laughs> we can do that in post edit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So going going back to Steve's uh, point uh, about uh, reviews or or testimonials, you know, you can actually build those within. An, another custom post type, so going like clients, right? So you have clients. You could actually add that as a field, as a testimonial, and you can still query that in areas. So, yeah. so there's there's not you know like you know you know in some use cases it may not make sense to do testimonial or FAQs, right? I like using F, uh, FAQs as a custom post type, um, but. You know, like it, it may not make sense for everybody in every use case. So Steve's point about planning it out is very, very important. Uh, you know, ahead of time to do that. Sometimes I have good points. It's, well, it's not you, often. It's not <laughs> often. You just, like, just look back. Look back at the archives. So, so, <laughs> Way so, back. So, so I created a plugin that won second place at Orange County's Plugin Palooza, and uh, essentially what it does is just gives you like a top level view of all of the post types that you have active on your site. Um, that that way you can determine like okay, this one is being uh, built by the theme, or this is being built by a plugin, or or being built some other way. And that way, um, fr from the back end, not to get really developery like Steve says, but um, every custom That's post type. Word. Every custom post type has a unique name, so you wouldn't want to install four team plugins and have the post type called team. Like you would want to call it Nine Seeds Team or WP Water Cooler Team or something like that. And that's where I think a lot of the problem with developers or people getting into development come across with custom post types is they don't know what they're querying for, they don't know what's what's being added in. You and, know, it would have it would have gotten first place if you hadn't embedded Visual Composer in it. Uh, well, so, it's, it's mostly my fault because he went to work for the wrong company. Otherwise, let's ooh, burn. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's, wait there's, no, there's, no. There's, there is no nepotism. There's no. Uh, let's. No, let's, I was a fair and impartial judge. Let's, let's, talk, let's talk to the WordPress Foundation for a second because there's yeah. no nepotism at WordCamp Orange no, County. No, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm speaking as the lead organizer next year. Okay. There's never so. been a violation of code of conduct. <laughs> so, um. 
And uh, now I forgot what it's. Oh, uh, so to Russ's point, right? And this is important. If you install a plugin that creates a custom post type, and you start to create some content, and then you deactivate that plugin, that content is still around even though yeah. you can't see it in the dashboard, right? So if if you have a pl plugins that you're trying out, so let's try your. Let's say you're trying out three events plugins, right? You install one, and you create a bunch of content, and the custom the post type is event. And then you deactivate it and put another one in, and that's creating content called event. You're going to have problems. Yeah. Which is why you should also, developers out there, namespace your custom post types. It's one yeah. of my big complaints when Jetpack started adding custom post types into it as like a feature of Jetpack. George isn't even He's, on here to defend. No, I know himself, he can't. Man. But they, they call <laughs> that post type. That's why we're ripping. That's why we're ripping on that nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Like, can we talk about best code practices? Let's not call our custom post type portfolio, just a single slug with no namespace whatsoever. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. Yeah, that's not cool. Not you know, cool. back when back when I started WP Water Cooler, um, one of the things I really wanted to do is make it so that I could list out all of the people that are going to be on the show. And I've tried this a few different ways, both with custom post types as well as with taxonomies. And um, when I first started out, I actually used users to do it. And one of the things that Brandon Dove said immediately is he goes, don't use co-author. Like co-author and, and trying to make all these things load up on the page is going to be a huge performance hit. Hmm. Where, where, are we at, where are we in that, especially with you, Chris, when you were saying this earlier about using users as kind of a, a, a taxonomy, if you will. Um, what do you think about that? You got you to gotta unmute yourself there. Yep. Can't hear you, Chris. Yep. Okay. Um, as far as using users instead of using them as a custom post type and display them on the site, I mean, when you went going back to co-authors, I've actually integrated that with my real estate theme, um, just because there's no other way to easily um, create a relationship in that sense unless you do use them as a custom post type. Uh, so it it's kind of like a catch twenty two. Yeah, that's either, where I'm at right now. Right, yeah, and it's um, I, I don't know where to go unless somebody actually gets back on co-authors and makes that plugin better. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so I mean, it's it's a little difficult. But the way I set it up is that because I have also brokerages in in this real estate theme, or theme. So you have listings, you've got agents, and you got brokerages. Um, so you need to create a relationship between the brokerages and the listings and the brokerages and the agents themselves. Um, and that was a little tricky, but I actually used uh, the custom meta boxes uh, from web dev to set that up and create those like relationships. So and you're welcome. There, there's, an, <laughs> <laughs> there's an interesting thing that happens there though, when you're, when you've got two custom post types and you're trying to relate them, there's really no easy way that's built into WordPress. Post right? to post is like the closest. Yeah, we do some stuff with ACF, right? Which is similar to what you're talking about with uh, with the, the MetaBoxes uh, uh, plugin. Uh, but there's once once you've bucketed that information by default, it's it's bucketed, right? It doesn't it doesn't really relate unless you're writing something custom. Well, especially like when you start getting into real estate things, like uh, the the real estate world is very territorial. So you know, like you want to make sure this listing is assigned to the right person, and and getting into that is kind of tricky, especially when you're pulling from third parties like the IDX and stuff like that. So, I I totally understand why it would it would be a better case to do it Chris's way instead of like try to go about it solving it using custom post types and, and relationships, and and that would be that would be a huge problem. One of the things that um, I do is on my personal blog. I will just start a new series and I will put that in posts. And once I get to about 15 of that specific kind of post, I will migrate it to its own custom post type. Um, like once I decide like this is something I'm going to stick with, it's going to be a new feature or new blog segment, I'll migrate it to it, its own thing. There actually is a plugin called something like uh, Post Type Switcher. Yeah. Or something like yeah. It's, There's it's two. one I found from you. Yeah, it's very handy, right? So it'll, you can you can just batch switch your custom your your post types from one to the other. Post when type you murderer. Do, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, post and, type murderer. That'd be a good name for a plugin. <laughs> that, 
That's my new plugin. Homicide no, murderer. It's, <laughs> it's going to be entered in the uh, plugin palooza. <laughs> Actually, I wonder is, is there a plugin that shows um, orphan post types like from plugins that are no longer active anymore? So there's, that, oh, that, there's a plugin. So that is something that I'm trying to work with. Uh, query all the post types. I'm trying to figure that out now. It, it's saying you have this thing in one of your tables that says, you know, it, it's called events and it's no longer being used. So, so what do you want to do with it? Because what's, what's important about that is if you got op orphaned post posts from an old post type, you've also got orphan post meta that may be just clogging up your database. Especially well, well, if it's if it's an event, right? Right. So an event has could have 20, 30 pieces of post meta associated with each post type with each post. Well well so no matter what the post type is, is it's going to be stored in unless you configure it in such a way, it's going to be stored in the post uh, table. And so every time you run a query, those those orphan posts are are being involved in that query. So mm -hmm. if you had forty abandoned things, it's it's got to it's going to include those forty abandoned things, and because they they still exist, you know. So. <laughs> For all the non-developers that are listening to our show, we just we just scared everybody. Yeah, the second you turn off a custom post type, you're going like, oh well, why do I have this huge database and why is my backup so huge? I've actually been tweeting about that. Um, I've gone through six of the sites uh, that we use for like the meetup and my personal stuff, and I have deleted so many different tables and WP option rows, and um, there's a lot of stuff, and that's why it's important that when you're Thinking about using a plugin, you should try it on development or try it on staging because you don't know what it's going to add. And not only that, you don't know what it's going to uninstall as well. Like there should be an but, uninstall okay, PHP but, file, but it, it there, but a this lot is of things true, but don't testing need. on staging, like giving people the recommendation of testing a plugin on staging to see what it'll create in the database. Those I'm, people aren't going to have it. Yeah. Like, they're not going to go free. Uh, uh, okay. uh, ask, okay. ask your developer. Ask your developer. I said yeah. that wrong. I said that wrong. But but what but what I'm saying is is like you should install it on staging to see. Okay, it's creating eight different taxonomies. It's creating this other thing, and it's got all this data. I'm not saying go look in the database, but I'm saying don't just install it blindly. <laughs> don't install it blindly. Is what ask, I'm saying. Ask, ask your audio. Ask your developer to work in a sandbox. Is what John is saying. I think. <laughs> Wait, Chris. Chris just dropped something in the chat we should touch on really quick because it's it's totally contemporary to right now, which is you got two minutes. Have at it. Well, <laughs> WordPress 4.7. One cool new feature is that you now have templates for custom post types, which used to kind of be a, a you had to hack around to get them to come out. So just like you have page custom post uh, custom templates available to you to to customize the look and feel based on templates in your theme, um, those can now be applied to custom post types, which is kind of a cool new feature Sweet. of 4.7. Well, so I mean, you can you can have one archive page that handles these six post types, and have another archive page that handles these other four, mm -hmm. instead of having ten separate archive pages for each specific custom post and, type. I think that's phenomenal. Yeah, and then the last thing that ought to get said on this before we all wrap up is. Um, for the end users wanting to create custom post types, custom post type UI is super popular. Yep. Um, from web dev. Um, for a, a UI for creating them, so is the Pods framework. I love the Pods. Pods framework is still just phenomenal um, and for managing custom content I, types. Too, so. I actually, I actually link in uh, in in my plugin. I link to those. Like here are my recommendations for setting up custom post types. As a developer, I love custom post type UI because you can use it as just sort of a playground. You make you make all your decisions, and then it'll spit out the code for you, so that you uh -huh. can just put it into your uh, in, into your code. It, if you're I, I, a developer, there's also a GitHub repo called Extend CPTs, which is like if you're if you're used to doing the old register custom post type code way, it's a really cool library for automating some of that. I'm definitely okay. not I'm definitely not trying to be a salesman, but you should check out a custom post type UI extended over on pluginize.com and it actually lets you do some cool things with the custom post types that you that you have added. Sweet. And I'm going to be a salesman and say that I I, sp I spoke I spoke with John about it and we actually uh, did a whole kind of walkthrough on how to use it and everything. If you go to WP Water Cooler, scroll down the very bottom, you'll be able to see the video that's there. I've got nothing to sell. That's post right, to post, Steve. yeah. Post to post, <laughs> I'm not selling it, but uh, someone should take it over because mm -hmm. what's his name isn't. Uh, uh, 
taken care of it. No, no, no. We need to take over. Oh, Kenny. We need. We need to take. We need to take over Kenny login before we take over that one, right? If you're going to take over a plugin, <laughs> Kenny login is should be first. That's that's the priority here on the show. Well, not only that, but we should uh, take care of the plugin called Johnny Cashed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking for a plugin to build called Serial Murderer. <laughs> like, I really, take I care really of serialized data. Like, I, I really like Post Type Murderer. I really love that post. Like, <laughs> well, that's gonna be the, that's gonna be the one that cleans up all the post types. Well, folks, that's about it for today. Level thirty. Thank you very much for being on the show. Not really very appreciate helpful. It. Sorry. Click on the links here on the screen if you want to uh, go check out any of the other videos that we've do- talked about and stuff. And if you like this, hit the little thumbs up button or the subscribe. Well, thank you very much. Talk to you later.